in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. So write that down. Here's another work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. What is that? He helps our infirmities. Now, notice, let's look at this, okay? Again, listen, this is one of the things that has made us, I guess, as a ministry stand out and, I don't know, is drawing attention or whatever it is, is the fact that what we say and what we teach is in context. We don't just pull stuff out and just quote a verse. We take it in the context of what's being said. So, and that's why that's one of the main reasons I'm bringing these out today, because there are a lot of misconceptions about what the Holy Spirit's doing. For instance, how it says here in verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now that word infirmities there is a Greek word, asthenia, and it is the most common word used for sickness. But you also have to look at the context because it literally means, it can mean, or I could say it's translated often as sickness, but the meaning and definition of the word itself means weakness. It can be weakness in any area. It can be lack in any area. Let's say you're struggling paying your bills. That's an infirmity. Believe it or not, all right? It's not like we usually... So when we say, well, that person has a spirit of infirmity, we have to talk about what is the difference there. How does that work? But here it says he will help our infirmities. And he is not talking about our sicknesses. Now understand this. Why? Because Romans 8 isn't talking about that. Romans 8 is talking about us becoming more like Christ and daily dying to the things of this world and killing the deeds of the flesh. Now here when he says, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, you go back and read the whole chapter, you will realize that what he is talking about is prayer. In other words, now watch. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Now, that has nothing to do with sickness. In other words, he's saying you have a lack, which is an infirmity. It, it really shouldn't have been translated infirmity, even though it, it, I mean, it's, it, it could be, right? <clears throat> but to get the meaning of the word here, it literally means you have a lacking in the area of knowing how to properly pray for certain things, and the Holy Spirit will help that infirmity make up for it and pray through you the perfect will of God. That's what it's talking about, right? It is not talking about sickness or disease, okay? Your sickness or disease doesn't need the help of the Holy Spirit, okay? It needs to be eradicated out of your life. It doesn't need help. It's doing pretty good on its own. It doesn't need help, all right? But notice, he says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. Why? For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, proven what I'm saying here, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, notice, what is he doing? He's making intercession. He's praying for us. Why? Because we don't know how to pray. So he prays for us with groanings that can't be uttered, right? Why? Because he knows what we have ab ab absolute need of, I should say. And in verse 27, and he that searches the heart. So what is that? Notice, the Holy Spirit helps our, our lack, our infirmities, our uh, weaknesses, <clears throat> any area that we don't have uh, knowledge of or things that we know everything about, the Holy Spirit helps that. 